Lindsay Gamble here at the Brain Trust. I'm here with Zizi Gibson from Brain Feeder Prehistoric Crew. That's what I rep. So welcome, Boston. It's first time. Yeah, I'm not like I passed through. Okay. You know, cool. but like my first time, definitely doing something on a career basis. You know? Yeah, yeah. You just got off stage. You tore it up, especially in the last couple of songs. Thank you, man. Right. Yeah, it took me like a while to like get in the flow of things. Like my heart was racing. Like I was just thinking about like all the things I've accomplished to just be where the fuck I was just standing. So. Yeah, I mean the Middle East is like one of the main spots in Boston. So like, like, all nah. the big dudes jump through it. Like when we pulled up and I saw like the inside, I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting tonight. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, actually, um, you know, you, you grew up in the military, so you've lived all over. I'm everywhere overseas. Yeah, definitely. Um, I haven't been overseas, so that's kind of you know. I always like to talk to people about that. That's crazy. But how is um you know you know being overseas, Germany, Thailand, you know Maryland, and now in California? How has all that shaped you as a person um, and a, as an artist? I think I've got this. Everything's gonna be okay mentality because I've never I've never been like a poor person, but I've never been a rich person. And I don't want to always say I've been a middle class person either. Like I've just been the way I was raised to just enjoy my fucking life. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I wasn't, but I, I could, I don't want to say luckier, but I've just was blessed with a different experience to not, to grow up as like the only African American around me. Like I didn't go to school with African Americans until like high school really, you know, I went in middle school, but it was kind of like a different type of area. It was like, just not, Prince George's County where I graduated high school. So it was like, everything was a cultural shock when I moved to America, like how things were and how we all like our persona and what we liked and the foods we ate. Like it was just, it's definitely made me to just be chill and just accept everything. Cause everything is just like, who the fuck knows, man? Like if you don't get along with this person, like really what's your reason? Like you can't even tell yourself like, oh, because you don't, whatever, like you're not gonna die. So get used to it, you know, and that's my mentality. Like, I just enjoy life. Everyone's cool. It's not about colors. It's not about anything. It's not about whatever. It's just like, if you can get down with it and we can come to a nice little agreement, whether it's, oh, we both like women and that's most win men, then we can all get along, whether like you're yellow, purple, or fucking whatever the next damn color comes. So. Yeah, that's a real good way to look at it. Um, so like everything you've done up to this point has led you to um, you know, being part of the Brain Feeder. Um, I know we talked about that that experience and kind of how that came about, but just touch on that, how like, you know, yeah, cause I mean, it's like kind of like a rare, it's kind of yeah, like, like a Yeah, like it's just, yeah, some weird uh, shit. Yeah, kind of like West. a big song. You just run up to the motherfucker and just rap and then just pray that the person just hears the talent and your ambition. And that's kind of what it was. I met Flying Lotus in the gym. I told him I did music, I got his email. It was like an email that was full. So it was like return to sender type thing or just like notify me that he didn't get it. I was walking around with like a few mixtapes at the time because I lost my job that day. And I saw him at the same spot that I saw him before and I handed him my mixtape and then I like didn't have Wi-Fi so I couldn't get on all the time. So at nighttime, like 11 midnight, I finally got on and then I noticed he had tweeted me and like shouted me out and like DM'd me like, oh fucking, your mixtape was really dope. We should fucking meet up, have lunch and just like kick back and talk about some shit. And then like we built a relationship from there. Word. And yeah, it just it was funny because it happened so fast. Just like three months in to moving to Los Angeles, you know, like living on couches and then it's just like, oh shit. Yeah, being in the right place at yeah, the right yeah. time. Um, so you put out your first project, The Ghost in the Shell. It's like, it's very laid back, it's very conceptual. Um, just kind of touch upon like the process of making that and how it compares to your earlier projects. Um, I think Ghost in the Shot definitely took extremely way more serious than I've ever taken any project. Like, it was more of fun with other projects, so I just kind of did whatever like the new sound was or whatever, Like, but I still try to make it good. Like, I'll never write a verse that I just don't want the world to hear like I'm not just like oh yeah I'm gonna write that. there are a few tracks where I'm just I'll write this for that person because sometimes you have to do that in this industry but for the most part but I would still never release something that I don't believe in even though I didn't want to do that style of music so this with Ghost in the Shell I was like I need motherfuckers to know who Azizi Gibson is so I took my time like I took a year out to catch the right beats to catch the right feeling 
And then like I was linking with Mills and then I was linking with um, Jonathan Lau and he's actually a producer based out in Boston and he produced half of my Ghost in the Shell mixtape and shit. So it's like, I, it's just, I met him, first time I met him is tonight. Like we just all through oh, internet, yeah. like he just been sending me <laughs> shit. Crazy. And then I just finally like opened the file and was like, holy shit, like gold mine. And um, you know, just, I took the time out, put the tracks back to back, kept on creating until I had it and I was just like, this is it. Like, there's enough for everybody. And the only regret I wish, only regret I have for that mixtape is just, I wish I had, like, I just wish I was as smart as I was now and drop that. Because sometimes it's not all about the music. Like, that's well, what it is. Especially now. Know? Yeah, especially now. And, like, I'm really learning that. And it's been about, like, I'm, like, half a year, a little bit more than a half a year since I dropped Ghost in the Shell. So it's, like now i know way more than i fucking did seven eight months ago for sure and I, it would it would have been a lot better that's all i can say Just but, on the next project yeah exactly that's what i'm doing right now i'm working on that yeah. all like my ghost in the shell too even though it's not called ghost in the shell so that's all it is. cool cool well you got some fans here hey man i'm i'm glad you did the interview i'm glad y'all had me out for real it's a, a great crowd like you don't know what to fucking expect when you're performing at a place for the first time, and it was like amazing. So Boston's, you know, you always get love as long as you bring good music. Yeah, Boston, y'all did y'all thing tonight. Y'all should have been on stage. I should have been in the crowd for real, for real. So, like, I want to once again, man, just thanks for having me. Thank you. Taking the time out to fuck with me. Thank you. It's Easy Gibson, Lindsey Gamble, The Brain Trust. Yeah. Good. Whiskey.